we're making our ganache. We have our lovely Avalon over here who will be monitoring us today, making sure that we're making some quality ganache. Thanks, Avalon. No chocolate for you, though. Not until you're at least five. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Turn on our scale with our bowl on top. I'm going to make a double batch of ganache. I use the two to one ratio, so two pounds of chocolate for every one pound or 16 ounces of cream, which is also a pint. I am using the Guitard Semi-Sweet Chocolate Chips from Winco in the bulk section because they are muy bueno. What do you know, my cream comes in one pint. So I am going to put this in a pot on top of the stove and bring it to just a boil and I'm going to watch it carefully so it doesn't burn. So heat on high, pull our cream in there and we're going to bring this to a boil. So you can see that when the cream comes to a boil, it rises up a lot. And this is why we really need to make sure we watch our cream. Pour your hot cream onto your chips. And we're going to let this set for two minutes before we start whisking. Don't touch it. Don't you do it. Okay, it's been two minutes. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla and now we're going to start in the center and whisk. Whisk, 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 whisk. You see how beautiful that's getting? Oh my goodness. And that, my friends, is some beautiful ganache. Gorgeous. Gorgeous consistency. Now we're going to let this sit at room temperature for, you know, it depends. It could be an hour, it could be two hours, could be 30 minutes, depending on how cold it is in your kitchen. But basically we want this to get to peanut butter consistency. This is the technical term. Basically how uh, firm we want it to be frosting our cake. So this is a good time to bake off your cakes if you haven't already. We need that eight inch round, seven inch, and a six inch ball pan round for our giant Hershey's Kiss. Bake those off and chill them and then we can start frosting. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious and yummy Valentine's Day cake that is a giant Hershey's Kiss with a surprise inside candy message. Woo, fun. So uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is bake your cakes. I'm just using two boxes of Betty Crocker's triple chocolate uh, cake mix to just keep it easy for you guys who don't have a lot of cake decorating skills. You could also use your own scratch recipe of chocolate cake if you, if you want to do that. Um, and you don't have to use chocolate cake, but it's Valentine's Day. Why wouldn't you be using chocolate? Hello? So um, I use two boxes, and I don't know if you know this trick, but you, to make your box cake taste more scratch-like, we replace the water with milk, we replace the um, vegetable oil with melted butter, and we leave the eggs how they are, and uh, that makes it a little bit more uh, homemade tasting. So with your two boxes of cake mix, you're going to make a six inch ball pan uh, cake. I use my ball pans all the time, so you should definitely invest in a set if you don't have any and you're going to make a seven inch round and an eight inch round. And we're going to uh, stack them up like so, right? And you'll have a little bit of batter left over and I just went ahead and made that into a six inch cake for uh, tasting later. I like to call this the bonus cake. This happens a lot. I don't always have you know, exactly the right amount of batter that I need so I might have a little bit left over. So I'll freeze this and put it into the freezer and use it for tasting cakes for clients or just to eat because it's delicious, hello. All right, let's start assembling our cake. We've got our cakes, we've got an eight inch cardboard, we've got a spatula, we got our ganache that we've made, which is delicious and yummy, and we've got our candies. Got a knife for carving, a couple of rings for cutting 
the space out in the center of our cake. If you don't have rings, just use a knife, you know, use what you got. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to take our turntable, our turntable extender, which uh, I get it from sugarworks.com. Just makes my life a little bit easier. And uh, we're going to put some plastic wrap over the surface of this table. Nice big pieces. The reasons will be revealed to you later. All right, eight inch round there in the center. Our ganache is a little bit loose and that's fine. I'm going to take our eight inch cake round. Uh, by the way, after I bake these, I chill them in the refrigerator so that they're easy to handle. Because, you know, messing around with a freshly baked cake is not so easy. All right, I'm going to um, cut this baby in half because I like lots of chocolate in my cake. Right? I'm going to take one of my larger ring cutters and just cut out the center. Oh yeah. Feel free to eat that. Oops. Glued down the middle part. Don't worry about it. It's fine. If you're not getting messy, you're not doing it right. Ooh, now I have a delicious little mini cake for my snacking enjoyment. Okay, I'm going to put a nice, yummy layer of ganache. You could use buttercream if you wanted, but I'm just going full chocolate for this baby. Mmm-hmm. Oh, so yummy. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. The cool thing about the triple chocolate recipe is that it has chocolate chips in the batter. So you got another layer of chocolate just right off the bat. All right, let's take our seven inch. And how about I uh, cut this center out first this time, huh? Thinking ahead. It takes me a little while, but I learn eventually. And cut this in half. Some more ganache. Trying to avoid putting any ganache in the center area because that's where our candy is going to go and I don't want it to be covered in chocolate if I can avoid it. Just line that hole up there. Before we put our next layer on, I'm going to fill the cavity that we've made with some candies and I'm using the M&M's Sweet Sains chocolate candies because they have cute little messages on them which I think would be pretty adorable. I'm just going to pour those right in there. Oh yeah, how cute is that? Okay, I'm going to take our six inch ball right there. And now I'm going to begin carving. Now I think that this will be firm enough that it's not going to slide around too much because our cakes are chilled. But if your cake was having problems with kind of slipping and sliding, then put it back into the refrigerator for, you know, uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes to get the ganache chilled up before you start carving. Basically, we're just going to carve this into a nice dome shape. And because we put down a piece of plastic, all of our little pieces are just going to go right onto the plastic for easy cleanup. Isn't that nice? I like easy. You don't have to trim off a lot because we went through the um, process, the forethought of making our cakes going from largest to smallest. So round this part off. And if you look at a real Hershey's Kiss, it's got actually kind of a little, a little swoop in the center. So I'm just going to hollow this center out just a tad to give ourselves a nice little swoop. We don't want to go in too far or we'll release the candy from its delicious cavity, which is not what we're going for yet. All 
right. Do a little reality check. Getting your head down here. That looks pretty great to me. I'm going to put my scraps into this bowl over here because, hello, those are delicious. And you can snack on those later. Don't waste the cake scraps. Okay, so let's lift this guy up. Set that over here. And easy cleanup. And now we want to put down another layer of saran wrap. If you don't have the big pieces of plastic wrap, then you can most certainly layer up multiple pieces side by side. Okay, let's just make sure that this will go all the way over on all sides. I think even I'm going to need to layer it up a little bit. Take a little bit of your leftover cake scraps here and add a little bit of ganache to it and just mush that up. Oh, it's basically going to turn into cake clay. And this is actually how you make cake pops. It ends up being like a delicious brownie. Put a little bit of ganache right here. And I'm just going to dome up the very tippy top of this so that we have a nice crisp point, like a real Hershey's Kiss. Carve down some more if you need to. You can see our Hershey's Kiss is really taking shape now. We need nice clean plastic for this next part, so because I was carving I had to clean that off. Now we're going to start icing our cake here. And what we're going to do first is apply something called a crumb coat. And this is to seal in the crumbs so that the outside layer is nice and smooth. Okay, it's centered on my board. this into the freezer for about 15 minutes to just set my crumb layer and then we'll put on the final layer. Okay, round two of ganaching. Nice thick layer. secret all of this plastic wrap that we have down here we're going to lift up and kind of crinkle and wrap it in a spiral around our cake and press it into the ganache and what this does is as the ganache cools it leaves these lines in the ganache that looks like a, like a wrinkled wrapper and then we're going to airbrush it silver. How cool is that? Okay. Make sure everything's up at the top. Press all that plastic wrap into cake. You can leave this out at room temperature if you want or you can um, put back into the freezer if you're in a hurry, or you can put it into the fridge overnight. I'm going to use my little modeling tool here to just add in a couple of extra defined lines. Just kind of accentuates everything. Okay, it's time to unwrap our kiss that's been chilling. Just be nice 
nice and careful. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Got all these cool lines in there. That looks perfect. So then the last thing that we need to do is add some silver to this baby. So there's a couple of different things that you can do. I'm gonna actually kind of define some of these lines while I'm talking. You can airbrush silver or you can paint it on depending on what you have available and depending on what country you're in. My favorite silver color is a Rolcom silver. It's very, very shiny and it looks very realistic. I'm just putting a small little hole right here for where the paper is going to go. But you know, not everybody has access to that, so you know, use the silver that you have available to you. I'm just smoothing out a couple little holes down here because I'm a perfectionist. There's also some silver sprays that you can get online that are very nice. There's Sugar Flare, that's very good. There is, I think Wilton has a spray silver, and then there's this Peony Luster Spray, and then we have Chef Master Silver Airbrush Color, that's also good. So there's a lot of things to choose from. I'm going to show you what the PME spray looks like. So that adds a pretty nice silver shine. And obviously you can just keep going over this and building it up, right? It also smells really good. But what I'm gonna use is actually um, this Rolcom Super Silver Dust. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of vodka. Adds to the um, romantic quality of our cake. <laughs> Let's mix that all together. I like Rolcom because it's edible, but it's um, still very, very shiny as opposed to some dusts which are very, very shiny, but not necessarily edible. You can see that that is very shiny. There we have our giant Hershey Kiss. So all that's left now is to put it onto our cake platter and to attach our paper topper. So now we're going to put our cake on top of our cake stand. I'm just going to pull this towards us so that the lip is hanging off the edge here. Grab that cardboard. Just lift that up like that. Carefully place that onto your stand. Now we're going to take our uh, little message. I've got um, a few of these that you can download out of my um, online shop. It's on artisancakecompany.com slash store, I believe. There's just a few different sayings on there that you can choose from to download. And we're just going to uh, tape this to a little bit of a cake pop stick. I'm just going to wrap it around like that. And you can just secure it with a little bit of a tape or, or a little bit of glue, like, like a glue gun. This is non-toxic. Just make sure it's partly on the paper and partly on the stick so that it sticks, so the stick sticks. And then we're just going to take our little pliers here. Oh, how freaking cute is that, guys? Just kind of 
crinkle this a little bit. Adorable. I love it. Okay, let's serve up our Valentine. I just wanted to remind you guys too that if you want to see more tutorials, I have tons and tons on my Patreon channel. If you go to www.patreon.com slash sugargeekshow and you become a patron, not only will you be supporting me and my tutorials, but you'll also have access to all my old tutorials and it's an incredible resource. Ta-da! How cool is that? Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate your support. And I'll see you guys next time.